You're watching Nevada Business Chronicles. Take a journey with us to see the innovative businesses that put Nevada on the business map. Connecting you with the businesses, events, and organizations that bring innovation and prosperity to the Nevada area, please welcome your host, Mitch Burney. We're with Tom O'Donnell of Preferred Auto Care in Sparks. Absolutely one of the standards for the industry in automotive repair. And thank you so much for letting us share you with our community. Uh, thank you, Mitch. Your business has been in Northern Nevada for a quarter of a century. I know I'm giving away your age here a little bit, but that's a long time, Tom. Well, yeah, it is. <laughs> what do you attribute that longevity to? Uh, best thing would probably be honesty and pricing, quality for what you're getting. I mean, you know, you can you can do a job on a car, but you might not get any value on it. You know, if you if you save a hundred bucks on a job, and you have to do it again next year or the year after, what'd you save? You saved absolutely nothing. One of the key reasons why I asked you to be on this show and share you with our community is the quality that you stand for. I've known you personally for more than a decade, and that's not an accident. You specialize in specific makes of cars, so let's talk about that. Oh yeah, Mitch, we specialize in Hondas, Acuras, uh, Toyota, Lexus, and Subaru. We've been doing them for, wow, quarter of a century. What I find really interesting is how that translates into quality. It's about being able to properly diagnose a car, and getting the job done right the first time, isn't it? Well, yeah, what happens is when you specialize in something, when you see something wrong with the car, sometimes it takes you a while to figure out what exactly is going on. But when you find out, you put that in your memory bank. And then I guarantee you by specializing, you will see it again and probably again and again and again. It becomes a pattern. And by doing the cars day in and day out, the same exact cars, a lot of the guesswork goes away. So it just makes it that much easier. And that translates to a consumer in a savings. If you're able to diagnose a car properly right the first time and taking the guesswork out of it, that translates into a lower overall labor cost to repair that same car, doesn't it? Well, or saves them in repairing the wrong thing and then repairing the right thing. Yes, yeah, so some lots of times it's substantial savings because we're not we're not wasting customers' money going here and going there and going here and going to the wrong places and then lots of times putting the wrong part on the car. You'd be, you'd be amazed at how many times when the car just gets here, we already know what we're going to do to it. It's just, it's, sometimes it's that simple. Saving the consumer money is also a key to your longevity and there's several different ways you can do that. One would be getting the job done right the first time and not going on fishing expeditions in the repair process. Um, another one is labor rate and you're really competitive in, in that regards as well. Yeah, our, our labor rate is lower than the dealerships. Um, I believe it's lower than a lot of the other shops in our community. Uh, the other place you can save people's money is uh, by using quality parts that are OEM, original equipment, but don't actually come in the factory wrapper. I'd like to show what we're talking about. This is going to fascinate a lot of people. They're going to be shocked at this next conversation. So let's grab a couple of those. Now, I've known this for years, that this particular part is identical to this part, except the manufacturer's name has been ground off of this part. But they're made by the same company that makes them for the factory. That's correct, Mitch. What happens is uh, this manufacturer makes this for this company. And what they do is because of probably trademark infringements, they have to actually grind it off so it doesn't have their name on the part. But this saves the consumer money with the same part well, it, with it, a ground off name. It's the only difference here. It saves the money. I mean, it saves them 15 bucks. But $15 on one part, and then $5 on another part, and then say $5 on another part, and it, then, ju it just adds up by the time you're done with the job. And an hour of labor, by the time you're done, you're saving people money every yes, day. Exactly. There's another way to save people money, and, and this one we've had a conversation about recently, and it's fundamentally why I'm here wanting to share you with our community. It's about saving people money by not charging them the same labor to do a part that 
5,000 miles later, you're going to have to remove to do the next repair, but combining them to save them labor. And you can give me an example of one of those types of jobs. Uh, we've seen it before where somebody, uh, a shop recommended a serpent belt, serpentine belt replacement. And so we went and looked at it and went, well, it's going to last another five to 10,000 miles. Your timing belt's due in another 10,000 miles. So why not, rather than pay me labor to replace the serpentine belt now, just save that money and use that money towards doing the timing belt and the serpentine belt replacement when it's due. So instead of pulling the parts off to do a serpentine belt and then pulling the same parts, including the serpentine belt off to do a timing belt, you're gonna wait until they're both due. And Tom, fundamentally who you are, genetically as a human being, is something that makes me proud to feature you on this show. Because it isn't about whether or not this is something somebody can afford or not in, in their life. Um, it's about who you are as a human being and you take pride in that. Well, I mean, the way I look at it is, is I don't know, everyone's the same. Everyone's equal. Uh, I don't look at their pocketbooks books and figure out how much money they have, what they can afford, what they can't afford. Everybody's exactly the same. I mean, uh, if they need something, they need it. I mean, we can't get around that part, but if something can wait, it can wait. And it, it, the money has, is not the issue. It has to do with what the vehicles actually need, what they can get away with. I mean, now granted, somebody might not have as much money as somebody else. And if they say, hey, Tom, do you think I can go another 5,000 miles? And if I really think they can, I'll say, yeah, go another 5,000, you know? Bad thing about that is it gets them off schedule, but as long as they have track record of it, they'll be fine. But it's who you are, Tom, the, that is driven by a standard that's personal, not about monetary gain. And this is really special in this industry. And if people know about that, they're going to be a waiting line out your front door. You choose not to employ service salespeople or somebody to manage the front counter. When somebody calls or walks through the front door, it's you that they get to work with. Yeah, I do everything. I talk to the customer, I greet them at the front counter, I see them at the end of the day when the job's finished. And I don't like to use commissioned salespeople because I think it promotes unneeded repairs and I don't think that's a good idea. Let's take a look in the shop. All right, let's go. You choose to turn rotors on the vehicle and there's a reason for that but on top of that Tom a lot of places force people to buy new rotors when you still turn them. Yeah well turning the rotors is the best way to do it because I've seen it on rare occasions where a brand new rotor you have to turn it anyway to, so the car doesn't shake when you apply the brakes. And what this machine does here is it measures the run out electronically from here to here and then as the rotor turns, the machine will actually move back and forth so that when you're done, this rotor is perfectly true. And so when people do a brake job and then they get back in and feel a vibration, this makes that so that doesn't happen. That's exactly right. Because what happens, a lot of people do in the old days, they used to take that rotor off and they put it in a machine. And what they did is they just took that rotor and they trued it to that machine. But not to the car. You brought it to the car. You have to true it to the car. And this is the only way to go. This is state-of-the-art equipment. Brings up another conversation, calipers. There are businesses that make people buy new calipers every time that they replace their brake pads. And oftentimes they're replacing them with inferior aftermarket parts, not even OEM or OES parts. Well, the biggest advantage of, of just properly servicing a caliper is that when it's done right, you shouldn't ever have to replace that caliper. I mean, they can virtually last the life of a car. Now, there are rare occasions, well, you will have to do something, but it's so seldom. The idea of putting on an aftermarket inferior part with a higher failure rate makes no sense. No, it makes no sense. Most of ours that we end up replacing is because they've been replaced by inferior parts in the beginning. And I just know that from experience, if it's done right, they virtually will last the life of your vehicle. So this car came in for a noise and what we found was this timing chain guy was completely worn out. The whole key is to this job was knowing what had gone wrong without taking it apart. Because until you take it apart, you can't tell that this is worn out. 
So you're like the engine whisperer. You hear the noise, know what it is. That's part of specializing in your make, isn't oh, it? Oh, by all means, it's specializing. And so Leo's now replacing this, putting it all back together, and the customer's gonna have a nice, quiet car when they pick it up. What do we get to do to this one? Well, this one here is you're gonna be your basic oil filter change. He's going to check the air filter. He's gonna uh, top off the fluid levels, check the fluid condition of the fluids. And he'll look at the belts and take a flashlight and kind of look it over, make sure everything looks all right. If you have a Honda, Acura, Toyota, Lexus, or Subaru, you now know the place to go is Preferred Auto Care. That's Tom O'Donnell. Thank you so much for Thank having you, us. Thank you. And I want to make sure people know how to get a hold of you. You can reach us at 775-355-7033-1705 Gregg Street in Sparks or on the web at preferredautoreno.com. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Inside Sierra Sids, there's a relatively new bar called the Atomic Bootlegger Lounge. And we're here with Marcy Barba, the owner of Sierra Sids, to tell us a little bit about this drink of the month special that you have that also supports nonprofits in our area. Yeah, we opened the bar a little over a year ago. We are the first craft bar in Sparks, actually. And we saw an opportunity last year to be able to give back to the community. So we looked about and for local organizations that we could not only communicate to our customers a little bit more about them and their mission, but be able to support that through creating a craft cocktail specifically uh, whose profits will go to that organization for the month. So in the month of February, because it's Valentine's Day and we're kind of talking about things that hit the heart and nothing hits the heart more for me than children. And I serve on the board of the Four Kids Foundation. So it was kind of a natural fit for us to create a cocktail in February the sale uh, proceeds would go to benefit the Four Kids Foundation. And we reached out to uh, Tahoe Blue Vodka. Again, it just seemed to be a, a natural fit. And our uh, cocktail gal created uh, the homemade Nevada cocktail for us for the month of February. Sounds like a delicious adult beverage. Let's see how it's made. Yes. Well, Mitch, I'd like to introduce you to one of our fabulous craft bartenders. This is Trudy. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you too. But tell me about the drink of the month. So our drink of the month is called Home Means Nevada. Great name. Fun name. And we start with house-made blueberry syrup infused with maple. House-made, so people can try to make this at home, but they're never gonna replicate it. Fresh squeezed lime juice. Tahoe Blue Vodka. We're actually gonna get to meet one of the owners, Chris DeMay from Tahoe Blue Vodka. Excited to do that. So you give it a nice hard shake. Shaken, not stirred. Right. Strain into the glass. Look at how beautiful that is. Top with a little champagne. Oh, wee oui, wee, oui. champagne, no. And garnish with a piece of sage, spanked so you release all the oils. <laughs> <laughs> what did that sage ever do to you? <laughs> well, people are gonna have to come down just for that part of it. This is Chris May with Tahoe Blue Vodka, part of this new sweeping local spirits movement uh, across our region. Tell me about Tahoe Blue Vodka. Well, we're headquartered up in Tahoe, and about four years ago, we really did help start this movement of local spirits and local companies and restaurants like the Atomic Bootlegger have supported us, and now we're starting to see more and more brands on a local level become supportive. We're very proud to give a portion of our proceeds back to Preserve Lake Tahoe, which was one of our uh, founding ideas of Tahoe Blue Vodka, and we continue to do so in the local community by co contributing to the Four Kids Foundation, which we're very proud of. The vodka itself lends perfectly to this particular drink. Uh, it's a blended vodka, so it's a little different than most vodkas which are distilled from wheat. Ours has a little sugar cane, a little grape, and a little corn to get a very distinct flavor and round mouthfeel. 
In addition, because there's no wheat in our vodka, it's actually a gluten-free product. And we're proud to say that we've won a lot of international awards uh, for our vodka. I imagine gluten-free makes a lot of people happy and then consuming the vodka makes me even happier. It's a win-win all the way around and we contribute back to the community. We're very proud of that. And thank you for doing that. Really proud to have you. Thank you very much. Marcy, thank you so much for having us here and your generosity for what you give back to our community. Mm -hmm. I'm sure some people right now want to come down and have their sage spanked. <laughs> Where would they do that? How would they well, find we can you? absolutely accommodate you on that. Uh, We're located inside Sierra Says Casino, which is at I 80 and McCarran Boulevard in Sparks. And the Atomic Bootlegger Lounge.com? Yes. Or they can give you a call. They can give us a call. Uh, we're also very active on Instagram and on Facebook. So take a look at us on Facebook, like us, and you can follow all of our monthly specials and the uh, charity of the month on that website. And speaking of the charity of the month, uh, let's take a look at the Four Kids Foundation. In our community, there are individuals that devote their life to organizations that benefit our community. Today, we're with one of the finest examples of that. We're here with Paula Nielsen and Earl Nielsen executive director and board chair of the Four Kids Foundation and thank you so much for being on our show. Well thank you for having us. If you wouldn't mind telling me a little bit about what Four Kids Foundation is and whom they serve. The Four Kids Foundation is a local nonprofit organization that provides financial assistance to children with any need when other resources are not available. Um, that means if they need medical attention and their parents can't afford it or the insurance won't cover it, or if they need glasses and the parents can't afford it. Any need a child has, when there isn't another source to pay for it, the Four Kids Foundation will pay for it. Earl, how did Four Kids Foundation get its start? Well, in, in 2003, I was actually serving on a corporate board, the uh, Kids Behavioral Health Organization, and the uh, owner and director of that organization had a conference with me and a couple of other friends about each of us kept getting requests for services that we don't really provide, but could we help? And so we would call friends or we would call, you know, someone we thought might be able to assist with this and, and, and try to connect the dots for people, but, it, but there was no organization. And so finally, uh, we came up with the idea of uh, developing the Four Kids Foundation as an organization that would uh, collect some funding that we could distribute among children who fall through the cracks. What an extraordinary organization that you have created for our community. On behalf of our community, I'd like to personally thank both of you for your work. Oh. And then I'm guessing right now there's some people watching that are thinking, how can I become involved? How can I support this wonderful organization? How would they go about doing that, Paul? Well, they can contact us and donate through our website, which is www.4kidsfoundation.org. There is a way to donate any amount through that website, or they can just call me and find out um, where they can send a check, and the number is 775-741-5231. That's Paula Nielsen, Executive Director for the 4Kids Foundation, and Earl Nielsen, Board Chair. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. Now more from Nevada Business Chronicles. Today, we're with owner Stephen Stennis of Strictly Reef, and I don't even know where to begin. What you do is so beautiful. Tell us a little bit about Strictly Reef. Uh, Strictly Reef was founded to bring the beauty of living reefs around the world to educate the public and to bring that sense of enjoyment and beauty into one's home or office. Really, you're recreating these thriving ecosystems that exist in the ocean and you're replicating them here in your shop. Yes, so be it the Great Barrier Reef, the Caribbean Reef, Indo-Pacific, Red Sea, Hawaii. Um, whether you've scuba dived or not, um, there's health benefits and we bring living art into your home or office. First thing people are gonna notice is this is not painted rock. This is live. And how you accomplish that is fascinating. 
Yes, we are the only store in the area that does things completely different. Instead of man intervening with sponges and filters and pads and, you know, chemistry set on your kitchen set, you know, table every weekend, um, we use all natural filtration. We do that through a process called a refugium sump, which is live living plants that filter the water chemically. The rock is living. That is your biological filtration. And the greatest misnomer is these are animals. They're not plants. The plants are actually kept below. This is the part I think that's gonna fascinate people. This is your refugium. And what you're recreating here is the real live ecosystem that exists in an ocean that supports this life. Yes, this simulates the Florida and Louisiana estuaries where the water is naturally filtrated. The protein skimmer replicates the Pacific coast where it is infused and removes excess organic waste called proteins. And the corals filter feed from the water it's a sustainable ecosystem in a box. One of the things that I understand makes these live reef tanks even possible today are advances in LED technologies. Tell me about your lighting selections. Yes, I'm an authorized distributor for Kessel LED and I try to use them exclusively. They are completely programmable. Um, they come in pendants or the flat bars, depending on the size of the tank. They use dense matrix LED. You can fully submerse these and they still function. They're fan cooled. We can adjust the lighting from 10K to 20,000 Kelvin. I understand that these lights can replicate weather patterns. Yes, they are fully programmable. You can imitate sunrise, sunset effects. Um, the main benefit to these lights is that it gives the coral a natural environment where not only do they survive, but they thrive. I also understand that these lights uh, are designed for the color spectrums specifically needed for these and are energy efficient as well. Oh, absolutely. This replicates a 250 watt metal halide, only consumes 90 watts of energy, and you get far better color rendering, shimmer effect. Um, the corals respond better to it. In the end, you know, they last 10 years longer. There's no bulbs to replace. They're, they're just so far advanced, and they're getting better every day. Yeah, the advances in technology, fantastic to bring live art to your living room. Speaking of that, I understand that you're doing a custom install in a home up in Damani Ranch. Can we go take a look at that? Absolutely, and we're using these lights. Well, let's take a look. But tell me what you've done so far to get it to this position. Okay, this homeowner decided to go with an 80 gallon um, innovative marine. Everything is contained within the back. I want to make sure I, that people understand how this works. This water goes into this estuary or yes. this refugium, which is full of life. It's full of plants and uh, different um, organisms and the shrimp. And this is the natural filtration system that you've created back here. The water comes back out into the tank purified and clean. Right, so everything comes in through the ends. There's a protein skimmer. Through the center, it's pumped back into the system. Now, I see you've already also installed some things, so tell me all of the other things that you've put in here. Uh, I understand you've added a wave machine for effect, and, and that's also healthy for the animals. Absolutely. So we're at about day two on this. Um, we've installed the lighting, the skimmer, the refugium, the wave makers. Everything is up, it's running. At this point, we're going to start adding livestock. Looks like you've already added a couple of live corals in this. Yes, in the initial setup, we did add a couple show pieces. Um, because they were such large rocks, they needed to be incorporated. 
And as we develop this, you're going to see how to build a reef over a few weeks. Let's go ahead and talk about what you're putting into this tank and why. I can see you've got some uh, livestock here. Tell me what's in this first bag that we're going to introduce. Okay, so we have a basic cleanup crew, snails, hermit crabs, shrimp, and a few emerald crabs. So what's this beautiful fish with the gold vertical stripes on it? Uh, yes, that's a copper banded butterfly, Midas blenny. And this blenny is part of the cleanup crew as well, I understand, right? Um, you know, everybody has a pivotal role to play within the reef. What do we do next? Well, we're going to give this a chance to settle in, make sure the chemistry is all right, start to establish a bio load on the system. I'll show you how to test the water. We'll go through a feeding schedule. And in a couple weeks, we'll start to add more livestock. This is really unbelievable. We were just here like three weeks, three and a half, four weeks ago. Yes, less than a month. And this is a fully stocked, beautiful aquarium. And you can tell everything's happy in here. Tell me all the things that you've put in here. We've added little seedlings of zoas. We have mushrooms, a couple different anemones, flower pots. Uh, larger flower pots, the cleanup crew. We have the spotted goby. There's actually a starfish in the sand. I am going to add some more pieces today and we're going to continue to grow and develop this tank over a period of time. What you've done here though really in the course of creating a seascape like this is in 30 days almost unheard of in in the industry right yes. i mean you have created this natural environment that looks like it's been here for years in a very short period of time you're masterful this is beautiful and it's life-changing i am certain of one thing there are people right now going stop tell me how i can get a hold of them i want one how do they do that yes you can find us at strictly reef reno.com you can also find us on facebook um, our address is 907 West Moana Lane. That's in the Annex Shopping Center just before Lakeside. Um, phone number 775-351-1848. We do house calls. We, you know, operate 24-7. I know there's casino workers and, you know, life doesn't always revolve around a 9-to-5 schedule. Wow, that's fantastic. That's Steven Stennis, owner of Strictly Reef Reno. I want to personally thank you for allowing us to chronicle you. For more information on this guest or to see this show in its entirety, visit nvbusinesschronicles.com. While you're there, you can watch all of our past shows on the Chronicles page and stay connected with us by following us on our social media. For information on becoming a guest on our show, contact us at info at nvbusinesschronicles.com. We hope you enjoyed the show. Thanks for watching. Tune in next week at the same time for more from Nevada Business Chronicles.